Okay, a few people have been asking how to mod days gone, so I'm just going to make a very quick video, or hopefully a quick video, um, on how exactly we've been doing this. Uh, the first tool you'll need, well, obviously you'll need the game, and then the second tool you'll need <laughs> is uh, the asset editor I've built. Uh, you can also use quick BMS for this step but I'm just going to do it with the asset editor to explain how that works and because you're going to need this anyway so you might as well download this and use it to unpack as well get a bit familiar with it a uh, brief explanation of what the tool is here uh, no, for the, if you're using the 4.11 compatible version for Days Gone you want the no save version uh, it's kind of a work in progress so I've had to refactor a few things it's a bit buggy I let, 11 is really old, hard to work with, it's just a pain. So, progress, and I've got some uni deadlines next week, and then an exam the week after. So progress on that is a bit slow, but it can read files currently. Uh, you'll see here I've got the asset uh, unstable, save disabled version, which is the one I just pointed at. You're gonna wanna open it up. Go into, uh, you may also want to add an exception to your antivirus. Uh, if you have troubles with this unpacking step, uh, sometimes it blocks it from working, which is something I'm also working on. But for now, you can just add an exception. If you don't know how to do that, Google it. It's super easy. Uh, and you want to go to Functions, Extract Pack. You want to find your f uh, game installation location. Then you want to go into Bend Game, Content, Packs, and select both the packs there. You hit Open. Then I'll ask you where you want to save it. You can pick a location. I have all my stuff over in these modding folders here. Uh, so I'd go into Days Gone, and I'd usually put it right here. I've already got it, so I'm not going to put it there again. I will kind of show you what the UI should look like when you sl hit select those. So I'm just saving it here. It will then just pop up and list out the files that it's extracting. If it doesn't do this, oh shit, I haven't got that on the screen, sorry. If you get just a black screen, that probably means your antivirus is blocking it, so do the exception. Um, if you close that, it will close that, so don't close it till it's finished. Let me just go open another one. So here is one I did earlier, and that's the game files unpacked. So what you're going to want to do is go file open. Go to your unpack content directory and you want your content folder and here's all the files. So say for example I wanted to oh actually there's a third tool oh, I'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> say I wanted to modify the damage done by a weapon. It's fairly simple, you'd go to the weapons folder, you'd look for the weapon you want to change, say projectiles. I know I want to change a pistol, then I want to change, let's say, the M9. Uh, if you have any familiarity with Unreal Engine, this is also going to be a lot easier because you're going to know what a model is. You'll know what materials and animations and textures and blueprints are. You'll know what curves and data assets and things like that are. If you have zero familiarity with the engine, good luck. You're going to need it. So I would go into the blueprints, I would look at the Bend Weapon M9, and quick overview, here is the string header list. Unless you're adding brand new stats and things, you can pretty much ignore this. Um, it's not super useful for basic things, but you will need it at some point, especially if you're looking in the hex and trying to read it and such like that. Linked classes is a link, uh, a list of other classes here that this file uses or is referenced, referencing at some point. Um, also, won't really need it unless you're doing uh, things like material swappings, uh, model swaps. Uh, you might need it for more advanced edits, but again, it's something you'll have to learn. Um, Especially if you're familiar with the engine, you, you'll probably know more about what's going on in here. Reference list, I'm not entirely sure what that's for. I have a vague idea, but you don't need to do anything with it. 
asset strings i haven't seen that used in 411 it was used a lot in 413 um, but it's there for backwards compatibility other details is mostly for map files then when you click code blocks you'll see a description of everything that's going to be listed below in these blocks um, the type of block it is if it has a parent class um, with the name of the variable used in the engine and some other details that aren't super relevant for you basically um, then you're gonna see everything in, that's inside it typically the data will be in a type 49 block uh, the blocks are ordered by type 1 type 9 type 49 and then all the rest which is usually 41 11 0 and 8 I, I think there's also a three type somewhere and a, maybe one or two other types but that's typically you're typically gonna see them in that exact order so you want to scroll through find 49 which is block six as you can see on the left here then you'll find block six now block six is typically preceded by the blueprint generated class it's usually one or two blocks behind it if you pop that open and look again in blueprint generated class uh, there's not really anything in this one but oh actually there's a couple of functions there well actually there's only one function because construction but this is all this is a list of all the public variables and functions on the class um, probably not super helpful again if you're just doing basic number edits but it's good information to know if you're going to be doing anything in the engine because um, this see these are the functions that you can call on from this class uh, there'll be a list of properties at the top if there's any usually there's not any public properties um, you know big developers don't leave things wide open and then there'll be a list of interfaces the object uses at the bottom again there aren't any here so we'll go over to the none and this will be all the default settings of the class so as you can see there is max vertical size float zero simple enough uh, melee collision component is an object of 11 so if this object is less than zero it will be green and it will point to a reference from the linked class um, asset editor shows you that automatically so you don't need to worry about doing it manually if it's positive then it's pointing to one of these blocks so the melee collision component is object 11 so if we look to 11 that you'll see the bend weapon overlap component so you know the melee collision component is an overlap component if you click on that you can get some details about it uh, anything that's light blue or dark blue even is a is being displayed as text but it's not actually text it's a number that references the header list um, so just be aware of that anything that's colored is basically not actually strings they're just numbers that the asset editor prints out in a readable format for you um, and as mentioned previously this version does not save so you cannot edit the numbers live but what you can do is for example if I wanted to edit for whatever reason user anim stand crouch blend weight crouching which is a float of 0.5 I can find the offset here at 12.057 so what I do is go and pop open my favorite hex editor, which for me is HXD. Uh, oh, it's probably the only one I've really used other than Neo, but I use that for file searching. Um, then you want to go to the file that we are currently looking at, which I don't actually recall is somewhere. <laughs> uh, projectile pistols, right? Projector weapons, pistols, I think I went into M9, blueprints, spend weapon M9. Yes, there we go. Alright, um, oh shit, that was on the wrong monitor. So, there we will see, offset is 12057. So, we go to hex, more offsets, and set them to decimal, because we can read those. And 12057, we'd hit control G type in 12057 that will take us to the location of the offset which uh, if you know anything about hex you'll see is a four byte float single and the number is right there 
so you can change that to whatever you want. It's a float. It has like seven precision digits or something. So you can make really big numbers or you can just put a bunch of zeros and make even bigger numbers because it works like that with floats. Um, then if, for example, if we wanted to change a Boolean property of 11772 offset, you will find Booleans are just single bytes. So you want to change the int 8 at the top here. Don't change the big numbers below it or you will fuck up the file. And then if we have, uh, hopefully we've got one somewhere. Be kind of surprised if we don't. Material index limit. Don't know what it does, but it's an improperty. Uh, it's a zero. It's not a great example. Um, let's see what we got in core data. Uh, there we go. So minimum hit damage in property 25 is an offset 9839. So pop open our editor. Put that in the offset. Okay. And there we go. Int32 is the box you want to edit. And when you can change that to anything under 2.4 billion, otherwise you will create an int overflow and break stuff. So don't set that above 2.4 billion. If it's ints, floats you can set to any number you want. Probably don't want to go over 2 billion either, just in case there's a conversion to int somewhere. That would get bad, I guess. Uh, in eights are used for bytes. That's everything in the. That's basically it for the hex header. It's incredibly simplified uh, with the offset information. I know a lot of guys like Spoods and Nero will probably be able to tell you more if you really, really want to know more. But yeah, that's basically all you need to know. Um, once the editable version comes out. Uh, you, you'll be able to edit just stuff in the asset editor and not worry about offsets. But it's always good to know kind of how things work without, you know, if you don't have all the tools. Um, that's kind of it. Then you'd hit, well, actually, you can't hit save in here. You do, sorry, save in, actually, save as <laughs> in here and make a copy of the file. Don't save over your originals because you will then have to unpack the entire game again or go for the hassle of trying to find that one asset to extract or, you know, just be careful, make copies. Uh, then once your edit's done, so for example, if I was going to edit that file we were just looking at, I keep forgetting where it is, M9, blueprints. All right, so, I've now made my mod and I want to test it. So we go to local app data bend game saved. If you don't know where your local app data folder is, you can just type percentage sign local app data percentage sign whack enter bend game saved. You'll need to make a folder called cooked, a folder called Windows No Editor, then Bend game content. And this is where you will recreate the exact path of the content so that the computer, the game knows what you're overwriting. So you want weapons, uh, projectile weapons, pistols. M9, blueprints, then I would have already that in there. Okay, and so this is the file I'm gonna edit. And because the file path matches exactly as it does in the game, when I load the game up, it will read this file instead of this file. Well, it won't actually read that file because it's not in the game, but you know what I mean. Um, if that version of the file that's in the back, it won't read. Uh, excuse me. Alright, so you load your game up, you make your tests, it works. Whoop de doo. Now what? We'll go back into the asset editor, we'll hit functions, package, and go to that cooked file we made. Go inside it, select bend game folder, click select folder. 
it will now create a pack file in the directory of the asset editor. Although I should change that and put it in the directory of the cooked folder would make so much more sense, I guess. But that's for another day. So I would go through to the asset editor. And there it is. It initially calls it 500 mod name. 500 is an index number. The game loads uh, pack files alphanumerically. So we try and control the load order by adding a number on the start. Uh, then the name of your mod, whatever you want to call it. Underscore P is a requirement to indicate it's a patch file. Um, if you download a patch file and it's got something like this, it won't work because it doesn't end in underscore P. So always make sure your last two letters are underscore P dot pack. Then you want to use the packs. You'd go back to your days gone, you go into cooked, you'd have a folder called packs, you chuck it in there, and there you go, that's how packs work. Uh, when you're distributing mods, test them in cooked, distribute them in packs. They're basically little zip files, they'll make your mod a lot smaller, they'll make it a lot easier to manage, uh, to identify, and we don't want people having a gajillion loose files floating around and then when it comes to uninstalling a mod they don't know what they need to uninstall and it's just a load of hassle don't do that at <laughs> spoods um, and then that's it you can do whatever you want with that pack you can put it on a discord you can send it to your friends you can put it on nexus or mod db or any other modding website out there um, i typically use nexus just because it seems to be the most popular uh, although if guys would like them uh, uploaded somewhere else, feel free to suggest locations. I don't really know anywhere else, honestly. Um, that's just where I do it. And that's basically it. So, yeah, let me know if you guys have any more suggestions. Pop on. I'll have a link below in the Discord. Uh, for the modding Discord that I use, The I'll have a link for the GitHub repo with the asset editor. Uh, I'll probably put a link to quick BMS as well, just in case you want to try that. Um, you will need a BMS script, and you'll have to figure out how to use quick BMS <laughs> if you don't already. Um, and that's pretty much it. So take care, have fun, and enjoy your modding.